follow my steps as best you can. I would pause this video when you need to download or install something because I've already done it. I'm gonna skip a lot of that step. Okay, so we're gonna get out of R and we're gonna run over to a couple of websites. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is create a GitHub account. So you wanna to go to github.com, run over there and you'll see a screen similar to this that's here and just put in a username, email, and a password. It's free, but note this. When you do that, um, your username will be publicly available, basically. If you're gonna use this to get a job, pretend it's like a LinkedIn account. You wanna kinda treat it professionally. So don't create a really wacky name unless you're gonna do like a trial name or something like that. Uh, make it short, uh, readable, easy to memorize, things like that. So just. Keep that in mind. So let's do a couple of things. I'm not, uh, once you sign up, that's it. Just pause for a moment, jump over to another website. So pause this video for a moment, jump to another website. If you have Windows, I would use uh, gitforwindows.org and uh, simply download this Git. It, Git is a version controller, basically, a version control application or system that allows you to keep multiple multiple versions of the same um, software in the development lifecycle, right? Um, damn, I can't talk today. But anyways, <laughs> Git is just basically a way to keep track of version control. You can merge, you can collaborate, merge from other repositories, you can branch off and create a whole new repository. So if you have like clones, like think of like OBS, online broadcast system. They have a another version called Streamlabs. Streamlabs is like a spinoff of OBS. So they branched off of OBS and created their own thing called Streamlabs. But you can actually follow that branch all the way up to where it originated, so to speak. All right, that being said, if you have a Mac, the alternative would be right here, and you should try git-scm.com slash downloads. Download that version, install it. So here we are, I'm gonna download this and run it. You'll see, all right, and also this is as live as I can get um, today, so we'll see. Uh, you wanna read all of the user agreements, click on next. This is the Windows version, by the way. I know you can't see all these, but the default is fine. Next, next, and then right here is what I'm talking about. I might be able to zoom in on this, maybe. Nope, I don't know how to zoom in yet. But <laughs> the middle one is get from the command line and also from third-party software. That's the one that's key, crucial because we're gonna use our studio to actually push this stuff to Git. And Git is literally just gonna be a placeholder for us, a holder, that's it. We're not gonna use it for much else yet, but I'm gonna exit this because I've already installed it and I don't wanna mess with all that. You wanna make sure that when you install it, it's gonna ask you about path variables. Probably for the novice or the beginner user, just go with the defaults. You want your paths to be registered with Windows or Mac, whatever it's gonna do. That way you can use the command line, which we will have to use, in order to push this stuff to Git. All right, so after you've paused this, downloaded what you had to do, installed it, you've created the GitHub account, log into GitHub, and we're gonna start fresh. So anybody that hasn't seen the last couple tutorials, I do recommend watching those because um, they tell you about the process of how these sites are built and how the layers and the directory structures work, et cetera, et cetera. So it'd be very crucial to do that. First, my introduction. All right, it still works. So my name is Mark Gingrass, and I basically, I teach the technology that you can use to create um, content like this in order to publish it for other people to learn from. Uh, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. It's basically, I have two channels. This is the R channel, and then I have one that teaches me how, how you create these videos and make money online. So check them both out. I'm gonna log in here into GitHub and you'll see uh, maybe a similar screen, but what you wanna look for is the repositories. You might have this screen or a different screen, but you wanna look for the repositories and click on new. We're gonna create all of this from scratch. Um, if you have an existing project, I might show you how to do that later. I did actually achieve that, so that's possible as well, but this is the easiest route for the first time. All right, let's get right to it. Let's call this one our, whatever you wanna call it. Let's call it um, project one. Simple enough, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna leave description blank. You can fill it in if you'd like. You can also 
if you pay for the service, you can have it private, but it's all going to be public for the free version. So I'd probably stick with public for now and initialize this repository with a readme. All right. And so create repository and you'll see not a whole lot's going to be done. There's a couple of things here. That's about it. What you want to do is you want to go to clone or download, which is right here. I'm waving my mouse and click on that little paper clip or copy that URL. I know you can't see it completely because I'm in the way, but just copy that URL right here completely and let's go to our studio. We're going to create a brand new project. So file, new project, and this time we're going to go to version control and git. Now if you've installed git like, like you just should have a few minutes ago, and you didn't restart your R, you might not have this option. So just remember, if this doesn't work right away, just restart R real quick and do it like by hitting the X. Don't just hit the uh, session, restart session. Actually close R, open it back up. And then, you'll, then you'll have this get option. Actually, you might have this option, but you might not get to this screen right here. Now paste that URL that you just grabbed in there and you'll see that my project one are automatically appeared. That means that it actually did reach out to that website that quickly and pulled in my project name. And of course, put your uh, browser to wherever you wanna store this particular project. We have a blank project here and it's gonna just do its thing. It's gonna set up its Git. It's gonna create a couple of um, hidden folders. I'll show you those in a moment. All right, so right now, don't do anything yet. Let's go to Git tab, which is up here, and um, you should have that because you've installed Git and restarted R. And we're going to stage stage both of these files, the .git ignore and the project1.rproj. Uh, we're just going to see if this works, and then you can move forward. So stage in it, you see that little checkbox, you should be able to click staged and staged, and then, so it's staged, it's getting ready to do something. What are we going to do with it? We're going to commit it as in, we're committing this code, we trust it, we know it works. So let's click on this little commit button here. Done deal, you see it's turned green here. Um, you wanna commit message, you have to have a message. So this is my first commit testing, whatever you wanna call it. But you have to have that, because every version of this, every time you commit that code, if you made some changes, you might wanna document what those changes are. So you can, you know, again, Git will, will will uh, version control every single change you make. You can go back a thousand versions and it's fine, right? So let's go ahead and click on commit then. You will see something pop up here and then the close button, right? No errors, just hit close. And then you're gonna wanna hit push. And when push happens, all right, so here's a couple caveats. Now you might be lost right now, you might be lost um, because something might've popped up saying there was an error. I wanna go over a couple more things. Two things. So mine worked fine. Don't worry if yours didn't work yet. I'm sorry, I forgot to show you a step that I've already done. So what you wanna do is you wanna set up your Git. Well, you might've had a pop-up that said, what's your username and password? That might've solved your problem. If it did not, go to shell or tools, shell, and it should open up to that project directory that you're on. It doesn't really matter for this, but what you wanna do you want to set up your email address and your username basically. So I'm going to just go ahead and type in and I'll do it again. So git space config space dash dash global space user dot name. And then in quotes, you want to put your username and my username is MT Gingrass. You get that from your GitHub, which you've just created. So right here, you can see my username is MT Gingrass right here. So let's go back to this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. I got no errors. So please, if you did get an error, I hope you pressed on and saw this message here. And let's do this again. I'm gonna hit the up arrow. Instead of uh, repeating all that, I just hit the up arrow like R you can do. Instead of username, I'm gonna call this, um, uh, I'm reading uh, user.email, user email and that's the actual email address you use to create your github account and that's for me mark.gingress at gmail.com feel free to contact me if you want i guess <laughs> oops let me uh, delete all this uh, stuff boom all right we made it this far uh, i feel like i should edit this piece and put it to this side i, I probably will <laughs> all right let's close that now we're good. Now, if your R 
Now when you go to commit and do all that stuff, it should work. It should work from this point. If it did not work, um, try, there's a couple things you can try. Uh, I'm not gonna give you all the troubleshooting techniques, but go to the directory where your project is. So in mine, it's site test project one. So this is where I created the directory. You will probably not see the .git or the .r project user until you click on view. This is all Windows based, so Mac, you've got to kind of extend this to a Mac and it should be fine. I have um, file name extensions checked and hidden items. So on a Mac, you'd want to make sure your hidden items are viewable. All right, so under uh, Git, you would have a lot of files here. You'd have one called index.lock sometimes. If you're stuck and it's frozen, you might delete index.lock. This one is not it, it's just plain index. All right, I'll leave the troubleshooting alone right now. I'm hoping that we're all on the same page. Again, make sure that you do that git command where you put your username and password, or username and email in there. All right, we have nothing on this project. We haven't done anything yet. So let's create that blog down site. How do we do that now? We do blog down, colon, colon, new site, right? So this is from scratch. Theme equals, and pick your theme from the Hugo themes. And I think that was called G-C-U-S-H-E-N, -G Hugo Academic. I believe that's what it was. You could pick a theme anywhere you want. Just look up Hugo blog down themes or something. And the GitHub name of that person and the theme is the format. So the author of the GitHub page and then the um, theme. So it's doing its thing. It's creating the directories. It's creating everything it needs in order to render a website, right? And it shows the website here on the bottom left or right. And I'm up here now, but I'm not going to stay up there. All right. So the website's there. We could see it. Everything's working. Um, one thing that you might want to try to do before you do anything is, is stop the server. We've created the website. Uh, now let's build the website. Let me, uh, jump back in here. All right. So we do have the server running. You can see to run, to stop the server, you can type in this. So that's what I'll do. I'll just copy paste that. I don't want the server to be running. Hit enter. Okay. Stopped. Now let's build the site. So blog down, colon, colon. Hugo build, and that's it. So let's run this. I know it seems uh, like a lot of steps, but it's honestly gonna save you a lot of time in the end. All right, that was quick and easy, it built it. Um, again, it's not gonna look like you want yet. We're just trying to push stuff to GitHub, that's it. All right, so we built the site. I'm gonna just go ahead and save this. You can see I've got hello R Markdown, Frida Goman, you know, that was prior to building it, but we built it, so that created all the public type stuff. Now, the problem is, with Git and RStudio, when there's a lot of files, it tends to crash a lot. So remember how we staged that .git ignore and that other file? If I try to stage this public folder, I've done this like six times now. It crashed every single time, so I'm not even gonna try it again. But you can click on it and try to click that little stage button right here, I don't think you should though, but you can give it a shot. Maybe it's just my configuration. What we're gonna do instead is go to the shell again. So tools, shell, and I wish I knew how to do it by a directory. So um, make sure you're in the directory of your project, which, which you should be. And let's see, there's a couple of commands that you'd wanna use. I think, oh yeah, yeah, I know what it is. Git space add, okay. Add now the subfolder is called public p u b l i c. I'm gonna put that and then I'll put the star in there. Why not? Um, so we're doing this with a command line. We're staging. It looked like it worked. There's a couple of warnings in there, but it has nothing to do with what we're doing. So now that they're all staged, let's. All right. So R caught up. Let me see if you can see me still. Yep. So R actually put those check marks in there. Again, you could try to check public and it'll maybe work, but it crashed on me six times in a row. So I'm staged. All of this stuff is now public. I'm going to now uh, commit all of the staged work that I've done, which was basically press a few buttons. So commit. 
Now in the commit, you can see that my staged stuff is still to the left, and that's all my public stuff. That's all I care about sending up to GitHub, because we're gonna use GitHub literally just for like a holding area for a Netlify later. Commit message. Um, first commit test for tutorial. You wanna uh, put this message out there because you might have 25, 35 different versions and you can kinda just revert back based on that message maybe, right? So click on commit and close and then push. Push is the final thing. It's gonna push it to your GitHub account. In fact, I'll show you now before I click it. Let's go to my GitHub. I'm in my project one. I can even refresh it. You could see what we staged before, the initial commit and the um, project, but now we're going to commit the rest. I'm gonna click on push. I'm gonna push. I know that seems like a lot and I you know, probably run into some issues. I think I covered most of them. I'm gonna hit the X on that. Now refresh. You see that public folder right there? We did it. The public folder is there. We have everything in public. Now this index.html is not gonna work the way you suspect um, because it's literally just gonna be the code. But don't worry about that. So I don't know if we wanna reiterate. So we have GitHub, create an account, Download gitforwindows.org or this uh, git.sem-com slash downloads. Download that for Mac. Go back to our studio. Create a new project, which is a version controlled project, not a directory. Click on version control. Paste that URL that you got from GitHub from that new repository, and it'll automatically plug in your title, basically, of the project. Create it. Um, stage your .ignore and your project file, commit those two files, push those two files. Again, if you didn't set up your, pat, your uh, email and your username using the shell, go back and check out how I just did that. So you might wanna do that first. All right, and then you would create the blog down site. I would take off surf site, I would run that daemon killer, whatever it was, build the Hugo site, then I would Stage all of the public using the shell, not our studio. So, all right, well, that's a lot for one little go, so we'll call this one quits. I'm sorry that it's a little bit confusing, but if you follow closely, I think you'll get there. Let me know in the comments if this was just really confusing and you want me to do another run at it, I can do that. Uh, or if you have any troubles, let me know if it works for you. Also, please subscribe and share like um, i do have a discord page as well i'm going to try to grow that community so please and thank you for all the help you guys have done for me so far just by contributing with the comments and likes